Live from Chicago, this is Bruce Dumont with our Beyond the Beltway analysis of national politics, featuring occasional injections of rumor and innuendo, all offered up by a panel of political insiders, pundits, power brokers, public service professors, and most importantly, plain-speaking Americans from coast to coast. Tonight, featuring commentary by libertarian Bruno Barron, Democrat Peter Garapé, Republican Jeannie Ives, and liberal David Masiotra. Our program tonight coming to you from the Paul and Angel Harvey Radio Studios at the Museum of Broadcast Communications in Chicago. Nice to have you with us. Our phone line's open at 1-800-723-8029. That's toll free, 1-800-723-8029. If you'd like to email me a comment, it's beyondthebeltway2019 at gmail. And if you want to tweet me a comment, it's at Dumo, at D-U-M-O. And, of course, uh, you can find us on beyondthebeltway.com. That's the audio and video portion of tonight's broadcast, but also previous shows. And, of course, we are live tonight on Facebook, and we are live tonight on YouTube around the world. So it's nice to have you with us wherever uh, you are tuning in this evening. And, again, uh, as usual, uh, we have a full two hours of discussion based on just what happened this past week. And I want to begin uh, with our guest by asking the question, uh, President Trump has said that the White House is going to withhold cooperation uh, in the request for subpoenas from the House and their investigation until Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, calls for a full House vote on impeachment. David Masiotro, you're our liberal tonight. What do you think of that uh, demand by the President? Is it fair or unfair? It's typically self-serving and absurd and, and boorish and buffoonish. Uh, if I had more time, but you asked that I was brief, I would come up with more adjectives. But I, I do have some sympathy for his request that Pelosi hold the vote right away because as, as long as they could uh, ascertain the entire transcript of the phone call, that to me would be sufficient on whether or not to proceed with the impeachment. Jeannie Ives, you're our card-carrying Republican tonight. What's your answer to that question? I don't think any American can look at what the Pelosi, Schiff, Cabal is doing and say that that is fair for, to anybody. Take the vote, decide if you really want to go down impeachment inquiry, and then that allows the minority party also to subpoena documents and participate in the proceedings right now. It's completely a partisan uh, proceeding that they're putting forward, and that is not fair to anybody. David Garapé is our Democrat. David, nice to have oh, you with us. Peter. Peter, what did That's I say? A, David's a great I'm, name, no, no, and Peter. he's with us this <laughs> evening as well. Sitting next to me. Peter, anyway, nice to have you with us. Um, should every uh, member of, of Congress have to vote up or down on this? You know, I'm, I'm actually fine with requiring a vote. However, to have the President of the United States request something, it should be taken seriously, and not to relitigate something that happened in the past, but that should also be included with a Supreme Court justice. Whether it was Merrick Garland, have an up or down vote in the Senate, and the same thing. If but the you president, that's, that, that, that's passed. I mean, it, it, right it is right now, the, the, subject that, the subject before the House and the nation at the moment is, should the President of the United States be impeached? Well, and this it also, seems to me that Republicans and Democrats all have an opinion on this. Why shouldn't the elected officials of Republicans and Democrats, people, why shouldn't they vote up or down on it? Then I, I would like to see the process codified, because as of now, this will only be, what, the, the fourth impeachment proceedings in the history of right. our country. So in many ways, they're flying by the seat of their pants, or they're looking back to the Clinton proceedings for well, guidance. Well, the last two, the last two times it happened, the House did vote. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's why, to clear up any uh, confusion, codify it. So put in, in the event that an impeachment inquiry begins, the House must vote. I'm, I'm fine with that if it then remains consistent, because... President Trump will not be the last president, regardless of party, to face an impeachment inquiry. I agree with that. Bruno um, Barron is our libertarian tonight. I don't think there's much that anyone has said this evening yet that I disagree with, so I can leave it to them. I think uh, I, what I like to do is remind people that impeachment is not a political, it is not a <coughs> legal process, it's mm -hmm. a political process. So everyone that's doing anything about impeachment is playing a political game. And obviously it's all inside of uh, legal procedures in the House and the Senate uh, to the extent that uh, it's, but it's all left up to the House and the Senate to make up their own rules on how they do this. So they can all go by the past, they can all go by what uh, somebody says, but all Trump is doing here is setting the stage for 
the back and forth process about what's going to take place here, and we'll see what the Democrats But do. if it's a political game, why don't you send it into the political arena and let people vote on it? That's right, and we have an election about 13 months away, and uh, the Trump is going to be on the ballot this time. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I'm, okay. talking about I'm talking about an impeachment vote in the sure, House. Sure, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly right. Weeks. I mean, oh. people I agree with you there. or don't know enough. That's well, right. David. Well, one caution that I would have that my <clears throat> well-dressed uh, Republican co-panelists <laughs> might find appealing is that the constitutional framers intended for the legislative branch to have more power than the executive branch. And over the past several administrations, we've seen the powers of the executive branch grow wildly out of proportion with original intent. And it's uh, consistent with Trump's personality to make those demands, but it's also consistent with how the president has routinely Bush, Obama, now Trump, treated Congress as a subordinate branch of government, when in reality the founders intended it the opposite. So the counterpoint, not to contradict myself, perhaps I'm like Walt Whitman containing multitudes tonight, but the counterpoint to my earlier argument and Trump's argument is that we've just had a second whistleblower come forward. Mm -hmm. What that whistleblower is going <clears throat> to divulge, we do not yet know. It could just be a rubber stamp on the first whistleblower, but, but it could you, be some but, revelation, some but, new insight. You, but so you, why not wait to see? No, but, but well... We well, they didn't wait to wait. see anything, though. They didn't wait to see anything right. before impeachment. They didn't wait for the transcript to come out. They didn't wait for the complaint to be given over, even though all that was said they were going to do. The cry for impeachment started with Schiff, and then it moved to Democrats, and then finally Pelosi gave in to her caucus <clears throat> even prior, knowing that they were going to release documents. They just decided they're going to impeach well, prior and, to that. And here's, here's one or other at thing least inquire to impeach. That, I mean, so, like you said, 13 months away from the election— I have a feeling that, I mean, my goodness, maybe even six or eight weeks from now, tonight, or or the topic of the impeachment inquiry will feel yeah. like it was two years ago. Yes, so that's much true. is happening mm -hmm. so quickly, and so that's why, when it is, you know, should they vote? Shouldn't they vote? Should they require one? That's why I really say codify it because things like this will come up again. And if anything does come out of this, because I don't see the president getting convicted in the Senate, and I say that as a Democrat, I just don't see it happening at all. And so we're simply going to go through this exercise, and then the whole focus will simply turn on to the Democratic primary so, and then the general election. No, but so Peter, Peter, Peter raises a good uh, point. Uh, as David said, mm -hmm. you know, we have a second whistleblower now. We may have mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whistleblower, this whistleblower, whistleblower number two, <coughs> He's not going to report anything that's good news for Donald Trump. Would right. you acknowledge with that? Yes, of and course. And if there's a third, fourth, I mean, they're not going to they're not going to say good things about Donald Trump. So if if that die is cast, all I want is I want all members of this House to say yes, let's proceed with the uh, inquiry, or let's call it off. That's all. I, and I, and, and I'll, 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 I'll take an up or down to, vote. It on works that. to Pelosi's benefit to do that. The faster she can get this off her plate, the better as well. <coughs> Michael Moore said Fine. do it immediately. Otherwise, you look weak and reluctant, um, and it doesn't play Michael well. Moore and I are on the same side again. <laughs> <laughs> No, you guys, you could, should put your two arguments <laughs> together. Crooked. A line is a powerful thing. It connects the global economy to your living room, cleaner air to stronger markets, factory floors to less crowded roads. Today's progress to tomorrow's promise. Norfolk Southern. One line, infinite possibilities. Oh, hello. You know, these days, I'm often quoted as saying, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. People forget that I was the first technology president using the telegraph, T-mails as I like to call them, to communicate with my generals. Well, today, we are fighting a cybersecurity war. And our best defense is for folks to follow some of these tips when they're online. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Hover your cursor over links to determine the true web address. 
Look for misspellings and poor grammar, which are warning signs of fraud. Be suspicious of emails requesting urgent action and never give away sensitive personal information. With malware for none, with cyber protection for all, this is your humble servant, Abraham Lincoln. back in Chicago. I want to pick up on what Bruno had to say. Bruno, you said that you think Speaker Pelosi, she wants this, she wants this done quickly. So I is would, that the reason? Well, the, 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 go ahead. I, I think she took this opportunity for this situation, which again is one of the things that tr Trump, for all his talents and lack of talent, uh, d does seem to be a pretty good bungler. But I think she took this opportunity to, to satisfy the far left of her caucus and the progressives and throw impeachment into the mix because the sooner impeachment is over for her, the sooner she can start preparing for keeping the House, <coughs> strengthening <coughs> her seats in the House. The Democrats can worry about taking out Trump. So I think what they're doing here is a little bit of strategy. I, I'm skeptical. I mean, look, at any given moment in time during the whole Russia collusion thing, I was saying maybe they get Trump, maybe they don't get Trump, but I'm a little bit suspicious that there's enough there to take him out. I feel the same way about these whistleblowers, but the <coughs> sooner that the <coughs> Democrats I, mean, well, I don't know what their strategy is. Maybe their strategy is to put the Senate on record so that if things break their way, they can say these people in the Senate voted to quit Trump and so on and so forth. There's interesting... Yeah, but they want, they, want to, they want to do that in the Senate, but they don't want to do it in the House. Well, I mean, the which, which, your, your, point, your point is well taken. I think that she, she succumbed to the pressure of, of AOC and, and the squad and the left wing of the, of the House. She, she, she kneeled to them. But again, she's also, she's a very smart cookie. She also realized, I think one of the reasons why she came, you know, screaming to this, this decision, was she knows there's about 30 members, moderate members of the House, who, who won in Trump districts, and if you ask them to vote up or down, how, it's going to make it a tough vote for them. Yeah, but, but I, that's why point. her own... If you're, a member, yeah. <clears throat> if you're a member of Congress, and I know, Gina, you want to go there, we'll talk about it later. Especially at this time, if you want to be a leader and you want to go to Congress, vote. Stand up for your position. If you get primaried, so what? Stand up for what you believe in and fight for it. Well, here's and as opposed to having the speaker say, I'm mm -hmm. going to give protection. We're going to give cover to 30 Democrats because I don't want to lose control. I certainly... If it's, if, especially when she's waving herself, wrapping herself in the Constitution, that it's what the founding fathers wanted. I agree with that. Up or down vote. I certainly agree with you your think. advocacy of political courage and transparency. However, with all due respect to both of you, it seems you have an, a narrow read on how we came to this position. I mean, there is a transcript of Trump doing what appears to be a violation, a flagrant violation of federal election law, leveraging American foreign policy for political advantage against the Democratic candidate who is currently the front runner for the nomination. Uh, that is something that demands an aggressive response. That's not so where simply are the subservience where are the courageous to Democrats the far left. Are, where are the courageous Democrats standing up and saying that? Well, well some yeah, of you see, mentioned I agree them. with you. I agree. Some, some of them it. you mentioned. The squad is part of that uh, well, Bruce, courageous here, here's the coalition. Thing that, and the rest of them are weak. And she's more, yes. she, even and though she's wrapping herself in the Constitution, she's more worried about electing 30 Democrats to keep her as the you, speaker. You're entirely, than she is you're about entirely right. And, and Republicans are much correct. better fighters than Democrats. Here's, Say here's, that again? Re Republicans are much better <laughs> fighters than Democrats. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, here, I don't here's either. The, here's I've the thing that really concerns, concerns me. Peter, Peter, Peter. Here's the thing that concerns me that the president is not going to get convicted in the Senate. So therefore, I mean, if the president won, the, if he played the Powerball and won, he would <clears> claim <throat> that he made the money. He didn't win it. If he then goes and gets acquitted <laughs> in the Senate, he would claim that he is exonerated. And he will take that one line all through his campaign to say everything they've ever charged me with. So you have, no confidence. You have no confidence in the Republicans in the Senate, other than Ben Sass and Mitt Romney, and I could name probably five or six others who would probably vote against Donald Trump. You think that there's no way in the world no. the Republicans will have enough integrity to vote against the president. 
Wait, Bruce, can you repeat that? The Republicans would need integrity to vote against the president? Hmm. Just, I, I, just, yeah, just that's just, an interesting just, framework there. How is it took integrity I, you know, Democrats this is, to this, vote against I, I, I don't think he's going to. I don't think he will get convicted in the Senate. I think the longer it's drawn out, he won't out, get convicted because he's not guilty. The Democrats. Okay. He, he won't get convicted because he's not guilty. Here you guys are deriding <laughs> the fact that he had a conversation about corruption with, in Ukraine. But it's and also yet not a criminal three, trial. Excuse me, it, it's three, a political one. Three Democrat senators last year, including our very own Dick Durbin here from Illinois, um, sends a letter to the Ukraine and says, we're going to withhold aid if you don't actually comp um, comply with the Miller investigation, if you don't you know, pony up information helping them with that. And they get off scot-free talking about corruption. And Donald Trump wants to get to the bottom See. line about 2016 corruption and you guys have a problem with that. You can't have it both ways. No, that's, that's, that's my that's point. You cannot have it both ways. Dick, they interfere Bruno, too. Bruno's got a comment, and then we'll go back. It, it, look, I'm a little bit. <coughs> I mean, I'm a conservative, and I generally am pro GOP over over the Democrats, particularly in this uh, uh, climate. But let's not pretend that all of this isn't politics. I, I read a mm -hmm. clip today, and I just put it on my Facebook page, that JFK bragged about how he looked into rich Republican donors' tax records. LBJ did all manners of things. <laughs> um, the kind of stuff that, the, the idea that it's like when, when David was talking about this horrible thing that Trump apparently did, and I, I, it reminds me of that scene from um, uh, the, the bomb movie, uh, what's uh, the... Dr. Strangelove? Uh, Dr. Strangelove. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Um, I mean, this is, <laughs> as the idea that presidential and senator, senator and, and senators and congressmen haven't used the p their power of the purse and their their offices to maybe get a little thing over here and get a little over there. We know Obama did this. We know that Bush did it. We know that everybody did it. And what I think is interesting about Trump, I mean, he is a bungler of sorts, but he's also this kind of a scoundrel who stands up and says, I'm the scoundrel. Look at what's been going on here for the last 50 years. And I think what's happening is the American people are like, yeah, you know, so uh, maybe they get him on this. I don't know. Well, I, what I would I'd say to that is <clears throat> if if 99 impaired drivers due to uh, high volume of alcohol consumption make it home without a traffic ticket or a stop, <clears throat> that's not an argument for letting the 100th get by the roadblock. So even if what you're saying is entirely true, uh, John Adams said we're a nation of laws, not men. Our laws <clears throat> must have some weight behind them. And here we're presented with, again, a transcript of evidence that is worthy of pursuit. David, the let me ask you a question. We talked about this last week. I want to get this from our Democrats. Do you think this conversation between the President of the United States, this President, mm -hmm. and this President of the Ukraine, do you think that's the first time the President, a, pre a President of the United States, has ever had a conversation about investigations in another country with another leader of the free world. Do you think that's ever happened in the history of the country? Oh, country? of course, yes. Okay, so then what makes this one unique? Well, By the way, let me ask you, you one You know other what makes it question. unique? Trump <clears throat> let the transcript go. He fully disclosed it, and that is what has never not, happened in the but past. But only yeah, after they placed it on covert servers. Wait a minute. He did, still did not First have to do it. First attempted to conceal he, the transcript. No, I, well, he had all you the rights to do it. That. Executive okay. privilege. Nobody else has revealed a tra personal transcript of a phone call between them and another leader uh, uh, in a nation. Second question to my Democrats. Ever. Do you think he in did. the history of the, of the country that when a President of the United States talks to a foreign leader about doing him a favor, mm -hmm. whatever that favor might be, that the United States is probably is in a position to provide uh, uh, money, foreign aid to that country, and that subject may have come up in the past. Well, Peter, I, I, uh, I think we should define that the favor is political in nature. If it's helping to extradite an American or, or a hostage situation, it's money. I think appropriated that's money. Yeah, that's the difference no, 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 you didn't no, no. include in your first question. Favor that, well, that, that the American to the political opponents of Donald time, Trump. One at a time. Go, go ahead. I think, I think it's, it's the nature of the favor that is being requested. And where I, I, I've never worked in national intelligence, but when a member of that community raises their hand and says, this is abnormal and it's concerning, 
I want, even if it is against uh, a, a president with whom I am aligned politically, if a member of the CIA who reviews those records says this is abnormal and this is concerning, I certainly hope it is reviewed. Now, so you do you do not do you believe that that a member of the CIA can have a favorite? Can they have a political favorite? They obviously favorite? do. I, I mean, I, I, Peter I, I'm, I'm sure they right. certainly vote. I, I would think that, that, that they certainly mm -hmm. vote as members uh, or as, as citizens. All However, world leaders are politicians. Correct. They know that politicians like to have domestic control over their future. It should not be a surprise to anyone that, that a president of the United States might, might, have a conversation with the leader of a foreign country, and, so, and the issue of so, foreign aid might have been discussed, and Donald Trump is not the first person to have that conversation. Well, Bruce, Democrats did it, liberals did it, Republicans did it, conservatives I, did it. I, Everybody I, did I, it. I don't doubt your assessment, and I have I have about as much trust in the in the Central Intelligence Agency as I do in my cats not to kill the birds flying outside the windows of my home. However, <clears throat> the last time I appeared on this program, you called yourself a law and order guy. I am. So the laws are on the books. So it seems that you're in the position of either saying that the United States should revoke those laws about appealing for political favors from a foreign government or entity. No, I didn't say that. Wait a minute. Well, no. then why would you allow, well, you why assuming. would you grant immunity to President Trump Solely not, on the I'm grounds not, that perhaps, here, here, maybe, we can point. speculate that not, other presidents be, have done it, but we clear. don't have proof of it. Point, point of reference, because it was addressed to me, and then, we'll go to, then we're going to go to break. I am a law and order guy. And by the way, I support a, a, a inquiry into, uh, into, into the impeachment. I support that. It's okay. If, the, if there's bad news there, let's know it. Let's let everybody vote on it. Let's then let's go to the polls, and after the after the Senate has voted on it, let's find out what we do in a nation a week from uh, this coming November or a year from November. I'm all for that. But let's let back both shortly sides with more comments. Participate. <laughs> With instant acceleration, electric cars are more fun to drive and more affordable than ever. Electric cars are here. Plug in to the present. Dallas, St. Louis, Nashville, Tuscaloosa. All major cities to feel the destruction caused by a direct hit from a tornado. Is Chicago next? It's not a question of if, but when, and the clock is ticking. Learn what to do now at ready.illinois.gov to become Tornado Ready. Dumont back in Chicago. Bruno has just said that everyone on the panel tonight could probably go to jail for something. Yeah. Is that what you said? I said that the, the, <laughs> the, law, the law enforcement structure of this country is so unbelievably powerful that if they want to target you and they want to bring you down, they can. And while David is correct that the presidents, presidents have a great deal of power, particularly while they're in office and they have a certain control over the administration of how things are done, it is also true, and we saw this with the Russia investigation and all kinds of other things, I've heard Democrats laugh at the term deep state, whereas I think the deep state is so obvious that how could anybody no. laugh at it? Right. And, and these, these whistleblowers, uh, these are apparatchiks that have been there under all these administrations. There's a, they, they have an idea about how they want things to operate. I don't find that they're particularly competent. I'm not one of those law and order worshiping conservatives. I think the FBI uh, and the CIA are a pretty good uh, definition of a clown show sometimes, mm. and they've got the track record to prove it. I'm just saying that it's not like it's not like it isn't obvious that everyone across the political pr spectrum that isn't a populist would love to get rid of Donald Trump. I okay. disagree I with the comment about right. the CIA and the FBI. 
they're, they're certainly not perfect, but I would rather live in a country with them than without them. I'd like uh, to see them be more honest. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. on, that's so on they, both sides of the spectrum. It's also up to Congress, who has the By power the way, to investigate <clears throat> them. By the way, on, on the subject of honesty, then we're going to introduce the guest, but on the subject of honesty, you've heard me say uh, numerous times on this program over the last several years uh, that the national news media is getting to the point where uh, it's almost laughable. If you're not crying about what they do, you, it, it, it's laughable because the, their ability to present anything in a non-biased uh, nonpartisan way is is pretty much out the window. And the, and the bigger they are, the worse they are, in my opinion. Uh, if you did not see, if you did not watch Meet the Press today, look for it on YouTube. Go and look for it because Ron Johnson, the Republican senator from Wisconsin who chairs uh, the Senate Homeland Security Committee, he was on with Chuck Todd. And he brings Chuck Todd on because he wants to do a number on Chuck Todd like he wants to do on most Republicans he brings on the show. But watch the conduct of Ron Johnson, but really watch the conduct of Chuck Todd. He goes bananas. Ron Johnson hands Chuck Todd his lunch big time. And Chuck Todd literally is back on his heels. He is sputtering. He is going off uncontrollably. If you ever doubted that the national news media is biased, if you ever doubted that, watch this program. There's no way in the world. He literally sputters for about 15 minutes. And then later on in the program, when Ron Johnson is gone, and he's brought on John Brennan, the former CIA director, who is a disgrace to the CIA directorship and is a disgrace to NBC to put him as a paid analyst. They then gang up on Ron Johnson when Ron Johnson isn't even there to defend himself. And John Brennan pontificates, and he then goes into a tirade where he criticizes Ron Johnson for, for ad hominem attacks. He goes into an ad hominem attack against the President of the United States. You've got to watch it. Watch if you, if you can't watch the whole show, just watch the segment with Ron Johnson. And if you're listening to us in the state of Wisconsin, I hope you call the senator's office tomorrow and tell him that he did one of the best jobs I've ever seen of a Republican on national television. He would not take the bait from Chuck Todd. And he took that and threw it right back in Chuck Todd's face. Great television. Now, having said that, speaking of great television, we're going to take a moment now to all let all of our guests tonight introduce themselves. And we're going to begin with our favorite liberal tonight, David Maciotra. David, favorite liberal. You are, tonight. Thank you, you very much. Oh, just tonight. No, you're one of our favorites. <laughs> the only one here. No, on, you're so. one of our favorites. <laughs> we, have, we have a liberal every every week. All right, great. Thank you, Bruce. I'm, it's always too. a pleasure. Uh, my name is David Masiotra. I'm a writer. Uh, I regularly write for Salon and the American Conservative, so I'm nothing if not interesting and journalistically promiscuous. Uh, and I'm currently working on my fifth book, uh, I Am Somebody, Why Jesse Jackson Matters. I've also written a book on Metallica, so when my book on Jackson is published, I can guarantee I'll be the only writer, living or dead, to have written a book on Jesse Jackson and Metallica. But I have total access to Jesse Jackson. He's one of the most insightful and important living Americans, so when that book comes out in about a year, uh, I hope you'll have me back to discuss it, and I hope everyone will read it. How's Jesse's health? Uh, He's doing well, you know. uh, (coughs) Parkinson's is a tough disease, and uh, sometimes it's obvious that it's uh, taking its toll on him. Uh, But he works six or seven days a week, and he travels regularly, and uh, he has a seemingly bottomless supply of energy. And at the age of 78, he remains an inspiration for that reason among many. And it's often because of his schedule and his refusal to relax and his refusal to uh, surrender his commitment to the issues that he considers of great importance that uh, the Parkinson's is tougher for him to manage than it is for others. Well, regular listeners uh, have heard this before, but uh, I would say even though Jesse Jackson and I disagree on uh, on a variety of issues, he's been a guest on this program. I consider him a, a friend of 40 plus years. And I would say, and I've said this on the air, that uh, you know, 50 years from now, 
uh, Jesse Jackson's going to be in the history books. Mm -hmm. There's very few people who are alive today who are not the presidents of the United States who will be in the history books. And Jesse Jackson will be, and I, I wish him uh, Godspeed in his, in his battle against Parkinson's. Yes, and it's one of the uh, privileges of my life, certainly my professional life, mm -hmm. to have developed this rapport and relationship with him and get his insights and stories firsthand. Good. Jeannie Ives, tell us who you are, a little, little different background than David. <laughs> yes, I'm Jeannie Ives. I'm a mother of five children, first of all, and I'm um, a West Point graduate. And I served six years in the Illinois uh, General Assembly as a state rep, and then I ran for governor. Um, I am now a candidate for Congress in the Illinois 6th Congressional District, and it's going to be a race to be watched uh, when um, next year in 2020 that race is uh, a suburban district and uh, Trump didn't win it. Um, the Democrats took it back, so we'll see what happens in that race. We have a great shot at winning um, that that debate, and I think that it's going to be fun to watch for everybody. It will be. And uh, Peter Garapay, nice to have you with us. Yes, Bruce, thank you for having me. Um, I'm a CPA, an author, a former candidate, ran unsuccessfully for the Democratic nomination for Cook County Treasurer and for City Treasurer of Chicago. Uh, my wife and I live here in the city of Chicago with our two young children. And, uh, yeah, we've got the uh, tax extension deadline key coming up. Yeah. And then otherwise, just try to keep up with our children. Who give us a run Do you for consider money. yourself a, 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 a liberal or a moderate or a conservative? I would say, no, more, more of a moderate or more of a down-the-middle Democrat. Um, I'm someone who results and systems matter to me. So I would like to see constraint or, or confines uh, that, that lead to production that actually... Who's your horse for 2020? Mayor Pete Buttigieg. I really like okay. him. Um, I mean, and he's, there are a lot of areas where he, he's shocked us. I mean, he raised over over $24 million last yeah. quarter, and uh, I like his pragmatism. Um, he's got a tough road, uh, but he's someone who I'm excited to see as part of the national conversation and a member of the party. Bruno Barron, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back. Um, discretion being the better part of valor, I won't do my Jesse Jackson imitation. Uh, although I, 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 I will say, though, that uh, to David's point, uh, he's definitely a person to be respected in terms of the, the things that he's stood for and the things that mm -hmm. he's done. So um, good for him and good for having a relationship well, thank with Thank you. Him. Appreciate um, it. My, uh, my name is Bruno Barron. I'm a senior fellow on education issues for the Heartland Institute. Uh, I had a radio show for a little while up in the northern suburbs. I've done some political consulting for some people who have run for Congress and for uh, um, governor here in Illinois. I wrote a book. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not as prolific an author as David. I did write a, a little bit of a vanity pamphlet with a friend of mine on the Illinois Constitution and why we should have a constitutional convention vote in 2008. Um, so the, you know, the book hasn't aged well, but I think one thing that has aged well is that criticizing the Illinois Constitution is um, the, accurate, the more accurate way to go. Does the, uh, a question to you, David, and to the Democrats, and everybody can weigh in on it. Uh, does Bernie Sanders' heart attack last week, do you think it eliminates him from consideration to be the nominee? David. No, it, it doesn't eliminate him. But uh, with respect <clears throat> and, and with uh, a position that never forsakes the dignity of some of the older candidates uh, running in the race, I do think we should be mindful of uh, once candidates of either party or other persuasion uh, reach a certain age, their long-term capabilities for performance in a high-stress position. Uh, we've seen Joe Biden, for example, uh, demonstrate signs of aging poorly, both physically and cognitively. Uh, now, Bernie Sanders has had a heart attack uh, at the age of 78. That's something to take quite seriously. So I'm not saying that we should forbid candidates above a certain age to run, but we shouldn't act as if it isn't a factor for our consideration. I'm, I'm, I'm betting that you're not behind Biden or Sanders. No. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> he, he makes an interesting point, and I'm not saying that you have to tailor everything to your competition, but President Trump will... You know, I, th I think he will use whatever is at his disposal, um, <clears throat> and he certainly did in 2016 when it came to Secretary Clinton's health and when she fainted getting into one of her cars. Um, so if 
as 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 the primary progresses, um, I think Senator Sanders will have to have an answer for how that is politically addressed. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think it's going to be a key issue, and again, uh, it just reminds everybody that uh, no matter what your plan might be, uh, health health can can change everybody's plan real quickly, and I think Absolutely. that's the case with uh, Bernie Sanders. I think he was having a difficult time keeping up with Elizabeth Warren sort of uh, in, in a variety of ways, although not in fundraising. He was raised over $25 million last quarter. But again, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be a campaign issue. We will watch for the rest of the way. Back shortly from Chicago. If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger, and I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call Wild Travels. Join us on our weekly road trip to see America's most offbeat and unusual attractions. Wild Travels, available on your local PBS station, or it darn well should be. CSX moves forward, so do the rest of us. supporting Donald Trump, who's like a serial cheater. I mean, you know, I, No, I, that's not the deal. The deal well, is how he did it. Well, I mean, that's, good Lord. Uh, well, that's my question. Hey, look, here's the deal. Look at that's, my, that's my question to, we to yeah, both. we're on okay, the air. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop oh, telling people they're on the air. Go ahead, Sanford Dave. Is, that's cheating. my question to both of you. Like are, are either of you, uh, and, and, I, and I hate to put you on the spot, but bluffing at all? I mean, Ben Sass said if, if the vote was privately and anonymously, uh, 20 to 30 Republican senators would vote for impeachment. Uh, I agree I with mean, that. I don't I mean, agree it, with it, that. I don't I think do. that that's do, 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 you, do you really believe well, actually, that Donald you know, no, Trump no, no. I, maybe, I, maybe I do agree is, is a good, competent, qualified leader of our country? No, I th let, here's let, the deal. Like There's two different questions here. First is, Those are, two are there questions. 20 to 30 feckless Republicans who would throw him under the bus? If it were a private vote, probably, because I've met my, plenty of my own feckless Republicans <laughs> in the state of Illinois that keep voting for unbalanced budgets and, and tax increases and everything else. So probably But on Trump. Are. Bruno, Bruno's got to go. So but the, Bruno, but on the, whether, let on should we got to let Bruno talk. No. Well, okay, so no, they liber, should not. He's a libertarian. He's okay. got to talk. They so should not. Trump is doing a good job. Trump. Lowest Bruno. unemployment uh, okay. in 50 Bruno. years. You didn't answer my question about okay. Trump. Wait, folks. I will. So here's the situation. Folks, we have the defer. I have, I have uh, always been, a, I've always been a Trump skeptic on the show, and I've been I a Trump that. skeptic yes. all along. Yes. Uh, and everybody who knows me or what follows me on Facebook knows this. Um, so I am not a Trump super fan. Um, it s first of all, Ben Sass is well within his rights to say stuff like that if he wants to. I don't know whether it's true, but it's probably true enough. And Ben Sass deserves credit for being one of the few people who took Trump on and still is left standing. What, what's interesting, if you look at the GOP today, is that Trump has won his battle to take over the party. And the reason they're not going to vote against Trump, and the reason Ben Sass probably won't, won't vote mm -hmm. against Trump, That's right. yes. um, is because there will be just <laughs> enough of a fingernail to say, OK, I don't have to vote against him. Right. And if the Republican Party dumped Trump in an election year, the Trump superfans that now make up easily 50, 55, 60 percent mm -hmm. of the party just can be so mad they'll stay home. And then That's we're going to exactly get, right. you know, and then we're going to get the Democrats. And here's my favorite tagline that I have about the Democrats, which is why I don't have to vote for Trump because I live in Illinois, but I might consider voting for him if I lived in a, in a, in a swing state. Not because I love Donald Trump or that I think that the earth moves down when he does a push up, but because. <laughs> The, the Democrat, like, Joe, let's take Joe Biden, for example. That's Chuck Norris. Joe sure. Biden's uh, first term as president isn't going to be Barack Obama's 
third term, it's going to be AOC's first term. The Democrats yes. are That's off exactly the rails. They are, they, right. have, they are way, exactly way too right. far to the left. Well, uh, here's here's exactly one thing, right. and, and I, I, I actually want to pull a page from our local politics where there have been a number of FBI raids lately, and to his credit, Governor Pritzker came out and someone said, well, look, they have not been convicted. You know, we have due process. And Governor Pritzker, and I agree with him, said our elected officials should be held to a higher standard. And there was an op-ed, I think it was an NPR today, and it asked about Secretary Pompeo. And I did not understand uh, how impressive his resume is. First in his class at West Point, Harvard Law, extremely talented person. But that code, a cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate others who do. We should hold those who have taken that oath and Jeannie yeah, herself to, to, to defend their country and also the values, kind of the, the utmost pinnacle, the vanguard of American values. We should expect no less of those who hold the authority to tax us and to send men and women in to defend our country. And I think we should act, ju ask just as much of our elected officials. Jeannie. Okay, let me try and tie this both together. First, Bruno, you're absolutely right. If those senators vote against Trump, everybody stays home. Everybody will stay home from the party. They're not, they're just gonna be so mad about it. Look, Trump for many people, including me, was 17 out of 17 when it came out of the primary. But what he has done in terms of policy has been transformative in terms of our ec economics. It truly has. It's it's absolutely lifted many people into the workforce. It's you know lowered people off of food stamps. It's regenerated energy in the stock market. We've had a growing stock market despite some downturns that's always going back up. Here's the deal. Um, we're going to stand by Trump. Trust me, we are. As it goes, and one of the best things he do he is doing is you have multiple federal investigations in Illinois happening right now, and you have multiple Democrats under federal investigation. And oh, by the way, Pritzker's not clean on this. Governor Pritzker is also under federal investigation for property tax fraud. So we've got a problem here. He's talking out of both sides of his mouth, but Trump and his federal investigators investigators are all over the Democrat Party in the state of Illinois, and I find that fascinating. Question mark or question for our uh, Democrats. How comfortable are you with Adam Schiff as the lead face and voice of the impeachment? David. Uh, miserable, you know. Why? Sleeping on a bed of stone comfortable <laughs> while it rains. Why? You know. Uh, because he, first of all, he wasted so much of his credibility on the Robert Mueller collective yawn Russian collusion report. Second, his communication skills are awful. I mean, some of us have thrown around the name uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the squad. Say what you want about Cortez, but she's a skillful communicator. If somebody with her ability to connect with the American public was leading the charge, I'd have more confidence. That is not Adam Schiff. I, I would, I would have the success or the failure of the impeachment inquiry judged on political merit is going to be determined by Congressman Schiff. Just the same way that I don't think Congressman. How about the fairness of it? Well, I mean, it, it just just like we said, it is a political inquiry. So Congressman Schiff. I mean, it's the same thing. Back in was it '98, Congressman LaHood. I didn't consider it, it, it wasn't him versus President Clinton. I when think the it was when the chairman the uh, when the chairman of the committee begins an investigation by providing a parody of what the president said, what does that say about the integrity and the smarts of that chairman? I, I think it's also one of those where it's not going to be. Congressman Schiff, who's on trial, and everything will move so quickly. Where I, and, Peter, and, why and don't you I, just call him an idiot for doing? No, I, I, I don't they're, think they're, he's an idiot. Let's, no, 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 no. The guy's an idiot. Who's doing that? Bruce, 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 Here's the thing, Bruce. Do you, I don't know. Do Welcome to the world, 2116. You can fly across town in minutes, or across the globe in under an hour. Whole communities are living on Mars. And solar satellites provide Earth with unlimited clean power. In less than a century, Boeing took the world from seaplanes to space planes, across the universe and beyond. And if you thought that was amazing, you just wait.
Today, fresh fruits and vegetables will go from a field in California to a grocer in Miami. A bottle of beer from Eagle Pass will journey to a restaurant in Manhattan. A two by four in Oregon will find its way to a townhome in Denver. A hybrid will say goodbye to Detroit and hello to a showroom in Austin. While a steel beam will leave a mill in Illinois for a high rise in Phoenix. And a flat screen in China will head to an electronic store in Memphis. Because today, as every day, wherever you find business, you'll find us.